page 442, chapter 29. Suicide of Judas Isheria. Judas Isheriot, the betrayer of Emmanuel, was among the counselors who wanted to kill Emmanuel. But when he saw what evil, unrightfulness, and cruelty, or torture, Emmanuel was undergoing, or befallen by, and that his face was bloody, he felt repentant, and suddenly great distress and misery, and a woeful effect, or feeling of woe, was within him. Therefore he became at odds with himself, took his money bag, with the thirty pieces of silver, tossed it before the high priest, and those of the high council, and said, quote, I did evil to this human being because I was thinking only of gold and silver and goods and wealth. I repent that I have betrayed innocent blood because his teaching does not seem evil to me now. But the high priest and those of the high council and the Pharisees and Sadducees replied, quote, Of what concern is that to us? Behold, it is up to you what you want to do to live in peace with yourself. And Judas is Hariot wept and fled from there, and soon he hanged himself from a tree branch in the field of the potter behind the walls of the city. The high priest, however, took the pieces of silver and said, quote, It is not acceptable that we put them into the collection box, because this is blood money. What should be done with it? Then one of the sons of the high counselors came forth and said, quote, I followed Judas Isheria and he has hanged himself from a tree, tree branch, in the field of the potter. Thereupon Caiaphas the high priest said, quote, Well then, the blood money shall be given to the potter, so that he sells his field to us, for the burial of the strangers and those who judge themselves. And at dawn of the following day the business matter was settled, and Judas Isheriot, the betrayer of Emmanuel, was the first to be buried in the field. But the high priest and the high council spread the news among the people that I, Judas Ishkarioth, the disciple of Emmanuel, had hanged myself as Emmanuel's betrayer and was hurriedly buried in the field of the potter. The people believed this talk, and they said, quote, He betrayed his friend for the pieces of silver, and so it has happened to him as he deserves, that he has hanged himself. He has taken a blood guilt upon himself, and so from now on the field of the potter shall therefore be known as Akeldama, or the field of blood. Before Pilatus, or Pilate. Verse 16. Emmanuel, however, was brought before Pilatus, the governor, who asked him, saying, quote, Are you Emmanuel, whom they call the king of wisdom? He said, quote, You said it, and this is what the people call me. And Pilatus asked and spoke, quote, is it also said that you were begotten by the angel Gabriel, who is the angel of God? But he said, quote, You say that, but I say that I am begotten by the celestial son Gabriel, who is a guardian messenger of the Ishwish, who is the ruler of the new human species. And Pilatus inquired once again, saying, quote, Let us hear your wisdom, for it is new to me, your teaching. And Emmanuel spoke, quote, Behold, Eons ago, my spirit in me, or part piece of creation spirit equals spirit form, returned from the realm of a higher world, or level of Arahat Atharsata, in order to fulfill a difficult duty, or task, mission. But now, I have been begotten by the celestial son Gabriel to be a true prophet in this life. This came to pass because of a determination and according to the desire of the Ishwish, the ruler over the new terrestrial human species, procreated in accordance with his directive. Through his kindness I added to my knowledge, so in this, living again, I gained great cognition and a right knowledge, which was imparted to me by his teachers over a period of forty days and forty nights. Furthermore, I have traveled extensively to faraway places, and I lived for many years in a land far to the east, or India. So also there I was taught much knowledge and many secrets, by way of the great wise ones and knowing ones, who are known as masters. 
and I will be on my way there again with my brother Thomas, a loyal disciple of mine, once I have fulfilled my calling or mission here. And when they heard Emmanuel's speech, those of the high council and the high priest became very agitated and shouted in front of Pilatus, quote, Do you hear his blasphemy? Thereupon Pilatus said to him, quote, Do you not hear how harshly you are accused by them? Do you not wish to absolve or vindicate yourself of this? But Emmanuel answered him, saying, quote, Behold, I will carry my burden as is determined for me. But it is also true that many do oppose me and will testify falsely against me, whence I will not find fairness. Truly I say to you, many dogs will kill a hare regardless of how many turns it makes. It is also customary among the human beings that the fairest person does not find his or her rightfulness because it does not matter whether many or few falsely testify against him or falsely accuse him as long as they are highly esteemed. Fairness rules only in the laws of the nature, because they are the laws of the creation. But among human beings there is little fairness, and it is decided by them according to the position, or ranking, status, of their reputation and according to the wealth, or goods and chattels and riches, that they possess. Therefore I ask you, how could I expect fairness according to this state, or state of affairs. Pilatus said, quote, Judging from the way you speak, you are very wise, and I see no blemish or fault, and thus no guilt in you. The teaching which you have just uttered appears questionable to me, but in this too I see no guilt, for everyone should find delight or joy according to their faith. But, th but since you have nothing to say regarding your innocence that would absolve you of the accusation of the high priests and the council, I see no hope for you, because their will is my direction, or command, to which I must be pliant. But Emmanuel did not answer him regarding his words, which surprised the governor very much. The Conviction of Emmanuel, verse 39. At the time of the Passover feast, the governor, Pilatus, had the custom of releasing to the people just one from among the prisoners one who they wanted, except for those guilty of murder or cause, of causing death. At this time he held a special prisoner by the name of Barabbas. And when the people were gathered, Pilatus asked them, quote, Which one do you want me to release, Barabbas the criminal, or Emmanuel, who is said to be a king of wisdom and the son of an angel, and in whom I see no guilt? But he well knew that the high priests and the Pharisees and Sadducees and those of the high council and the scribes had bribed the crowd of people. Therefore, they had given the people copper, gold, and silver, so they would plead for the release of Barabbas and the staking of Emmanuel. For he well knew that they had turned him over out of envy and out of hatred, since his teaching appealed to the people. And his wife had also implored Pilatus by saying, quote, May it be that you would have nothing to do with this fair man, for today I suffered greatly in my dreams because of him, and I find that his teaching is good. Therefore, he was favorably inclined toward Emmanuel. But, according, but among the people there was much screaming, and he asked once again, quote, Which one shall I release to you? Slowly the screaming stopped, and the governor raised his voice a third time, asking, quote, which one of these two shall I release to you? And the people screamed and said, quote, You shall release Barabbas to us. And Pilatus asked them and said, quote, Thus it shall be. But what shall I do with him who was said to be Emmanuel, a king of wisdom? But the people shouted and called out, quote, Stake him! Have him staked! But the governor was not willing and asked very angrily, quote, what evil has he done that you want him staked? He only taught a new teaching, and for this he should suffer death? Where then is the freedom for the word, and the thoughts, and the opinion, and a good teaching? But the people screamed even louder and called out, quote, Have him staked! Have him staked! And Pilatus saw that he could do nothing against the bribed people, but rather there was great unrest and turmoil. 
he took a pitcher of water and washed his hands before the people, saying, quote, You decide what should be done with him. He is the prisoner of the council, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the high priest. So let them judge him. I will have nothing to make, or nothing to do, with this fair man, for I am innocent of doing anything to him, and wash my hands before you in innocence. But the people milled about, or fell into turmoil, shouting, quote, He shall be staked, he shall be staked. Then Pilatus turned Emmanuel over to the high priest and the high council, and released Barabbas to the people. And the high priest and the council had Emmanuel whipped and handed, over, handed him over to be staked. The people who were present and who were gained, or bribed, bought, by the high priest with pieces of silver, however, made a noise, or screamed, yelled, and shouted and cursed Emmanuel. However, the high priest and the high council indulged themselves in self-praise and were in good courage because their cause had been successful.